This is a practice problem from page 59 of the textbook, trying to write empirical formulas for compounds. So as a review, an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio and we're going to be doing ionic compounds. I can tell that we're doing ionic compounds because I have ions with charges. So looking at the ions in A, I can see that I've got the sodium cation with a plus one charge, and I've got the phosphate anion. Now phosphate is a polyatomic ion, it's PO4, with a three negative charge. That three negative charge applies to the entire group. So it's not the phosphorus that has a charge, it's not the oxygen that has a charge, it's that whole group. So the phosphate anion has a three negative charge. So if I look at those charges, I should be able to see that a positive one charge, so this positive one charge here, will not directly cancel with a three negative charge. In order for this to cancel, I'm going to need three and a pluses to cancel that one phosphate. All right, in order to write this, I don't just put the three in front, I use subscripts. So subscripts come after the element that they represent and they tell you how many you have. So if I know I need three sodium ions, I'm gonna write Na3 and one phosphate, PO4. Notice that when I write this formula, you don't see the charges anymore. When I write an ionic compound formula, I'm making sure the charges cancel, so I don't see the charges anymore. It took three sodium ions to cancel the one phosphate ion. We can do something similar for part B. Now I've got zinc with a two positive charge, and I've got sulfate with a two negative charge. In this case, the charges match. The two positive directly cancels with the two negative, so I just need one of each. I do not put a, a subscript of one in, so I just write this formula as ZnSO4. In this case, it's because the charge is canceled. So I do not need more than one of either of those, and again, I don't put the subscript one in. So this last one, part C, I've got iron with a three positive charge, and I've got the carbonate anion with a two negative charge. And these are gonna be a little bit harder to fit together. Obviously a three positive does not cancel with a two negative, but if I doubled the amount of irons, I'd have a six positive charge. If I doubled the amount of carbonates, I'd have a four negative. A six positive and a four negative still won't cancel, so I'm gonna to need to get one more carbonate. So I need two iron ions, and three carbonate ions in order for this to cancel. Because if I have two iron ions, that's gonna give me a plus six charge and three of the carbonates gives a minus six charge. So that's the only way it's gonna cancel with two irons and three carbonates. Again, notice that that carbonate ion is one big group. It's CO3, and that entire thing has a two negative charge. So I have to keep that group together. When I write this formula, in order to say that I want two iron atoms, I put a subscript of two. In order to say that I want three carbonates, I can't just put a three like that. Because if you notice, there's, you're not really sure what that three applies to. You have to make sure I understand that that three applies to the entire carbonate group. And the way we do that is by using parentheses. So if I put the entire carbonate group in parentheses, now I can see that there are two iron atoms and three groups of carbonate polyatomic ions. So again, let's circle the final answers here. And when you do your homework problems, make sure you are also explaining how you got to your correct answers, so how many of each ion you had to have in order to make the charges cancel.